I've had Apple's ludicrously expensive AirPods Max for six months now. I've used them day in and day out, but the big question is, would I buy these again? Hello and welcome back to Marcos Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have. And if you haven't subscribed, the button is, you know where it is by now. So when I reviewed the AirPods Max back in January, I think, I explained that I bought them purely for this channel. That's how nice I am. I just bought them to review. I don't get sent them. I'm not big enough for that. So I have to buy all this stuff. Poor me. But the reason I wouldn't have bought them personally is because they're just too expensive. When you compare them against the likes of the Sony XM4s, which are still my favorite over the ear noise cancelling headphones, these these are just too expensive. They don't offer enough over those XM4s to make the additional money worth it. They're £550, $550. Excuse the dog in the background. But like I said at the start of this video, I've had them now for half a year, which is, I think, long enough to get to the bottom of one, what is great about them, two, what's not so good about them, and three, to finally answer that question, would I actually buy them? I have quite a specific use case for AirPods Max that has kind of developed over the last six months. And basically, I use them first thing in the morning. So when I get up, I, I start work quite early because I'm a bit weird. So I start work at about 6 a.m. And that work normally involves writing for my blog. And to help me sort of wake up and get into that deep, focused mindset of working and writing, I like to close off the world around me. And these are brilliant for that. So these go on my hair cup of coffee, noise cancelling on, swirly whirly synthy type music comes on and I just get to work. And for that they're brilliant. So I, I use them every morning for about an hour and a half for that reason. I also occasionally use them sat at this desk. So if I'm sat here and I want to listen to something fairly quickly, you know, if I just want to put a pair of headphones on, these are the easiest way of doing that. So I tend to use that, but I tend to only use them really if I'm not using my Sennheisers, which are all part of my audio file setup. I occasionally use AirPods Max for calls. I'll explain why and how I use them for calls a bit later, but that's it really. I've taken them out of the house once in six months. And I was actually brave enough to take them to a coffee shop and put them on my head and sit there working. And this may be silly, you can tell me what you think in the comments, but I'm almost a little bit embarrassed about these headphones. If people see that I wear them, I just think they must think, is this guy showing off? You know, are those those really expensive Apple headphones? I live in Leamington Spa, which is a very nice place, quite an affluent area, and I've never seen a pair of AirPods Max in the wild. Have you? I'd love to know if you have. I've never seen them anywhere, and I just don't really want to be the first person that does that. So I took them out once, nothing happened, obviously I just wore them. Yeah, they, they these are completely stay at home headphones for me. Kind of covering battery life first because I think that's such an important part of headphones like this. These days, when you buy a pair of over the ear noise cancelling headphones, you can expect at least 20 hours of battery life. That's standard, 20 hours, great. It's, it's enough, trust me, it's enough battery life for, for anyone really. Now in use, these do go beyond that. You know, I, I, can't, I think they're rated at about 20 or 25 hours as well. And they're pretty accurate in that respect. And that's 20 hours actual use, you know, when they're on your head and you're playing music or whatever through them. Where these fall down, I think, is the standby time. Now I've mentioned in past videos, I'll put a link above to the comparison I did between the AirPods Max and the Sony XM4s. I've mentioned previously that the Sony XM4s, their standby time is just epic. I use the XM4s generally out on the road, they're my kind of coffee shop headphones, and I just put them in my bag. They're in my bag now, I haven't charged them for a couple of weeks, I don't think, and I put them on my head earlier in the coffee shop and they still had 70% battery left. And that happens so often. They just don't seem to drink any battery when not in use. The problem with AirPods Max is that you can't turn them off. And this was a big thing when they first came out. And I made a point of it when I first reviewed them. Every other reviewer did. A lot of people pointed out that actually it's not a big deal because when you put them in this stupid case, which I'll get onto in a bit, they go into like a low power state, which is all fine. But the net result of this, that the kind of real world experience of this is that these lose battery much quicker in standby mode compared to, to headphones like the Sony XM4s. I just seem to charge these more even though I use them about the same in terms of duration and with the same frequency as the XM4s. And standby time for me matters. It's That's a big convenience thing. If you get your headphones out and they need charging or if you don't even bother to check if they've been charged and go out with them and they're not charged, it can be a pain. These do charge quickly in fairness, but I don't really think about charging Sony XM4s. These, I think regularly about charging them and I seem to have to charge them quite a lot. A very quick note about the condensation issue. Now, if you don't know what this was, someone took off their ear pad thing after a, a bit of use and they discovered that within the AirPods, there was water droplets, which was basically condensation, which was kind of had built up during the course of that person using the headphones. A lot of people, when I first 
put my review up of the AirPods Max, asked if, and they still ask to this day actually, do I, have I experienced that condensation issue? Now, I have experienced the condensation. It absolutely happens. If you wear these for an hour, an hour or two in a relatively humid environment, although it doesn't have to be humid, and you take that off, you'll probably see a little bit of water in there, a little bit of condensation, which sounds frightening. It's not. I've looked into this briefly, and the general consensus with this is that most headphones do the same thing. If you've got a pair of over-the-ear headphones, when was the last time you took off the earbud thing, not earbud, the whatever that is, and looked inside. You just don't do it. My, I'm sure my Sony XM4s and my B&O H9s probably do the same thing, but you can't easily get behind these. So I think it's just because you can check the condensation so easily on these headphones, but it hasn't had any detrimental effect on the headphones. I wouldn't worry about it. I couldn't do a six month review of the AirPods Max without talking about this, this stupid, stupid case. And it is stupid. It didn't get any less stupid the more I used and owned these headphones. It's hard to even explain what it is because it's not really a case. It's not really a cover. It's just this thing that you have to put, well, you don't have to, but you're recommended to put the AirPods Max into in order to put, put them into like a low power state. What it isn't is something that protects your AirPods Max because as soon as you put them in, pain to use as well, as soon as you put them in, does nothing. It got all, you have all this exposed aluminium here. I'd never throw that into my bag in a million years. Exposed aluminium there. It doesn't protect them. It doesn't look very clever. And invariably you walk around carrying it like that and you occasionally catch yourself in the mirror and you think, what on earth are you doing? Another reason I probably wouldn't take them out on the road anywhere. And it's got this horrible material which doesn't wear well. Fairly nice felt type thing inside, fine. But the, the outer part of it, they've used this horrible kind of plasticky stuff, similar to the type of material they use on the Magic Keyboard for the iPad. It just doesn't feel very nice. It scuffs, you can probably see there. I've already got some marks on there which are very difficult to get off, but I have no interest in getting them off either because who cares? It's just terrible. The sound, these are headphones after all, and there's no getting away from the fact that the AirPods Max, they're the best sounding consumer headphones I've ever ever used, but they should be because they're 550 quid. And the best way to describe the sound these make, this is a non-audiophile explanation. If you're an audiophile, you'll probably take a good hearty laugh at this, fine. But if you're a consumer, if you put these on, these sound expensive. They sound very high fidelity, very crisp, lots of bottom end. They're tuned completely to impress consumers. They're not tuned to impress audio files. They're also not particularly offensive. You know, if you think back to the, the old Beats headphones, which were very bass heavy and just a bit too much for, for a lot of people, these aren't like that at all. They're very, they're not neutral, but they're just very considerately EQ'd. Apple aren't trying to go after the audio file market with these. They want consumers with the, a fair bit of disposable income to spend money on them. And if you do that and you put them on, they do impress you straight away. It's very smart by Apple. Whatever they've done to the EQ profile on these, it's very clever because you can't help but be impressed by it, which does, in a way, justify some of that price. Do they sound that much better than the XM4s, for example? No, but they do sound very good. And if, and if you're not A-B testing these between other headphones, trust me, you'll love them. I think also while we're talking about the sound, it's worth mentioning the noise cancelling because that's a big part of these headphones. And it's very, very good. It's probably the best noise cancelling I've experienced. Everything gets very, very quiet around you. There's no weird hissing noises. I know some people struggle with noise cancelling. It can be a little bit oppressive. I haven't really experienced that with it. It's very, very good noise cancelling. Normally, I use my... AirPods Pro, these are my kind of go-to headphones for voice calls and, and video calls. And the reason for that is that they, they just work flawlessly. But also they're not very intrusive. People can see that you're wearing them, but you don't look stupid wearing them. So they tend to be my go-to headphones for calls. But when I first tried these, it's just, it's brilliant. And the reason it's so good is because it ha they have a thing called transparency mode. Basically, you press the button on the top here and it filters in some of the outside noise. But the way it does it is very smart. It doesn't just kind of let the outside noise in. It uses the microphones, I think, to almost synthesize it. It's very hard to explain unless you've tried these, but you get this very again high fidelity audio of everything around you including your voice so one of the big problems I have with most over-the-air headphones for calls is that you can't properly monitor yourself even if the manufacturer gives you the ability to hear yourself it's never very good but these are brilliant if you turn transparency mode on and you've just got them on your head normally and you take a call you can hear yourself perfectly you can hear the other people perfectly they can hear you perfectly they're brilliant and this is fine on 
audio only calls, but when it comes to video calls, again, just my preference. I don't particularly want people to see me wearing AirPods Max. I don't know why I've got this problem with this. If you, if you have the same thing, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I don't want people to see that I'm wearing AirPods Max, because I, I know if they see that on the call, it's gonna start a conversation that I don't really wanna get involved in, which is a shame, but yeah, if you wanna use a really good pair of over-the-ear headphones for calls, these are brilliant. Lastly, design, very quick thing on design. It's stunning. These are the best looking headphones I have from, from a consumer point of view. Very durable. I've not scratched them. I've had a good look over them. There's no noticeable scratches on there. I look after them, but you know, they get chucked on the side and stuff occasionally and no dents, nothing at all. This is only after six months of use, but like I say, I've used them pretty much every day during those six months. There's no wear on these at all, although you can replace them pretty easy. They're very expensive as you'd guess, but they've done remarkably well and they look, they still look lovely. <laughs> they look really nice. So the big question, if I were to rewind six months and not be running this YouTube channel, would I buy AirPods Max for myself personally? No. The reason is really, really simple. It's the reason I gave, to be honest, right at the start of this video. They're just too expensive. £550 is a lot of money for most people, unless you're rolling in it and you've got loads of disposable income. Any purchase that isn't essential, that is £550, you have to think about, you have to justify it. If it was a, I don't know, a dishwasher and you needed it, you'd spend it. You might be a bit reluctant, but you'd spend it because you know you need that thing. No one needs AirPods Max. They're not headphones that you have to have for any conceivable reason. You'd buy them because you want them, which is fine. But at £550, $550, they are just too expensive for most people. And that might explain why I haven't seen them out in the wild. Maybe these aren't selling very well. So if I put my consumer hat on, I can't recommend them because the competition is too good. Sony XM4s, the B and O H9s, they're two head pairs of headphones that I love. And there are so many other brands out there, all of whom offer pretty much the same package, just not quite as beautifully designed, admittedly. None of them have the same transparency mode that makes these such good calling headphones. And design-wise, yeah, like I say, none of them look quite as good as this, in my opinion. That's very subjective. What I'd love to see Apple do is create a lower cost version of these. And there have been rumors of this right from the start, when these first came out, when these were first announced late last year, there were immediately rumors of a lower price model. And I hope they do that. I'm not sure what they do, what they take away. I'd hope, I hope they would leave things like transparency mode in there and retain the sound. The sound is very important. If they can just work out a way of making a lower entry point cost-wise pair of these that competes more with the Sony XM4s of the world. There's something missing between AirPods Pro or normal AirPods and these ridiculously expensive over-the-ear headphones. Will we see it? Who knows? I hope that's proved useful. If you want to see what I thought about the comparison between the AirPods Max and the Sony XM4s, keep watching for a link to that video. But in the meantime, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you next time.